Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to another great game of the Legends of Chess tournament in 2020. It's Magnus Carlsen, the world champion against the former world championship challenger Peter Liko and Peter is really an interesting guy because in 2004 he faced Vladimir Kramnik for the world championship and uh, he was so near uh, to become a world champion in chess uh, but uh, he lost the last game so before the last round he had a full point in front of Vladimir Kramnik Vladimir needed to win that game a game and he won it and uh, stayed the world champion in chess because this rule was uh, that the world championship challenger should win the match game in order to become the world champion in chess for me it's a silly rule uh, maybe you will agree maybe you won't agree but for me it's really a silly rule I think that uh, the world champion or the world championship challenger should really win their games even if that first match game for instance we have this 12 rounds and then uh the, the the match game ends in a draw then uh this rapid game should be played this blitz games or even this Armageddon games in order to decide who is becoming the next next world championship uh world champion in chess like uh, these days so uh for me so far it's a great tournament because we have this old school chess players and this new school chess players uh old school chess players like vladimir kramnik vishian and peter Liko is here uh, so Peter Swidler is also uh, sort of an old school, new school uh, chess player. We have also uh, Vasily Vanchuk and of course Boris Gelfand who plays really um, incredible tournament. He plays really in great attacking uh, attacking games, really this uh, great brilliancy games. And uh, that's why I don't think that it was a mistake to invite so many old school chess players because... They can even win this one believe me or not in this uh, rapid format they can really compete in the highest level maybe in this classical time format they're not so strong because um, uh, younger players can calculate positions better and better but in this rapid format believe me uh, everyone can beat everyone so that's why i think it's really an incredible tournament and whoever set this up uh, congratulations and i wanted to thank whoever thought of this uh, it's really a great tournament as i said so let's check out now the game we have uh, magnus with the white pieces so this is now the game four the first three games uh, ended in a draw uh, Peter Leko really played great games against Magnus Carlsen. In none of these games he was worst. He was equal for the whole match game. So even in this game, in this uh, round four, he really made Magnus Carlsen sweat. So let's see now what happened. Uh, here c4 played by Magnus. c5. We have knight to c3, knight to c6, e3, knight to f6. And now d4, c takes d, e takes d4. And now d5. So what uh, Peter Liko is doing here, of course, is to crack the position immediately in the center. There is one positional problem here for white. It's this isolated pawn. Uh, if b takes c4 happens, then white could risk maybe an isolated pawn. But okay, uh, the isolated pawn is not always a weakness. White could maybe uh, advance the pawn on d5. But as a long-term plan, this could really work. So that's why magnus needs to be careful uh if he doesn't want to go into uh strategical disadvantages and here knight to f3 we have bishop to g4 uh here magnus played bishop to g5 um bishop takes uh, f3 doesn't work here immediately i believe because there are now several problems after queen takes f3 here uh maybe uh, queen to uh, uh knight to d4 and here i think we can immediately uh, attack the knight it's not such a good position the knight has to retreat still we can take this pawn so so far this pin doesn't work so that's why after the move bishop to g5 peter Leko uh, continued uh, with the normal move e6 and here magnus undermines the pressure very important move to not risk this isolated pawn situation as i said c takes d5 and we have uh, e takes d5 and here we want to stop a little bit because this position is really a weird one it's really a symmetrical one and uh, what to do here in this position so the main ideas of these types of positions are outposts so because you should first of all realize this static center position it means when the spawns are like this so when they're not moving where they cannot move the only way to make an advantage here is uh, through outposts here from white's perspective maybe c5 e5 so from black's perspective c4 e4 so black should occupy somehow maybe the e4 or c4 square so uh, when we watch this trades of pieces which pieces should be traded which pieces are good uh, i've created 
uh, I wanted to also uh, tell you this in this video. I created this uh, series, this pawn, bishop and knight strategy because chess is all about knights, pawns and bishops. So the strategy, our planning skills are simply built, built around these three pieces. As I said also in that series, I'll show you that, that link of that series at the end of this video. Queens and rooks are basically tactical pieces. We need them in order to create tactical shots. Of course, bishops and knights can be also used as tactical pieces, but most of the times we'll build our strategy simply around bishops, knights and pawns. So what I mean about this, as I said, our strategy here uh, is uh, to maybe create outposts here on c5 and d5. When we talk about positional strategies and the positional trades of pieces, then we should realize that this pawn from black's perspective is on a light square uh, and uh, we should keep our dark square bishop on the board because then uh, you see the dark square bishop has a great activity. From white's perspective, white should try somehow to keep the light square uh, bishop on the board because uh, in a potential endgame, if you continue maybe, if, if you could just imagine the position here if you uh, continue maybe from white's perspective here with the dark square bishop and white is uh, pardon me black is also continuing the game with the dark square bishop imagine now a uh, simplified game an end game stage then you see black can always maybe somehow uh, try to attack this pawn on d4 because it's on a dark square and white will use this bishop on g5 in order just to defend maybe somehow this pawn so as I said, I'll show you that link of the, my new series about this Bishop Knight and strategy. I think uh, it can help you in order to make plans, in order to make strategies, good strategies in chess. Because now, as I said, in this game, it's all about outposts and positional trades of pieces. Even knights can be uh, good pieces here. For instance, if let's again imagine a position. If black makes something like f5, and has maybe a d5 and f5 uh, pawn here then our strategy is of course to play an outpost on e5 as usual but we could also maybe give up uh, a knight for uh, a bishop for a knight and maybe just in order to occupy the e5 square so our strategy to cement one piece on a good square like on e5 can be maybe trade off more pieces just in order to make that outpost happen so as i said uh, i hope I, it's not too complicated uh, what I'm telling you here, but it's really important to understand this couple next of moves by, by both players. So bishop to e2, we have bishop to e7, castling, and now castling also uh, here by uh, by Peter Lico, h3, bishop to h5, and now rook to e1. Here h6, again bishop to h4, and here uh, rook to c8, played by uh, Peter Lico. We have now knight to e5. <coughs> and here, I believe... It's a position which Peter Leko uh, likes because, first of all, as I said from this pawn and bishop's uh, evaluation, you see it's good to give up here the light square bishop because our pawn, from black's perspective, is on a light square. Again, I'm talking about this potential endgame. This pawn can be uh, used now uh, as a supportive piece because uh, this pawn on d5 as i said is uh, can be used as a strategical outpost here on e4 so peter lico of course simply trades off the bishops not a problem after rook takes e2 we have now g5 and after bishop to g3 bishop to b4 so what peter lico is uh, trying to do now is this knight outpost on e4 that was all possible because first of all he played the move g5 now the knight can move and we have now played bishop to c3 uh, bishop to b4 attacking the knight on c3 then after potential uh, b takes c3 now it will be really cool to have our knight on e4 so you see how this steady game can become really dynamic with the ideas of of knight outposts of realizing your bishop strength you're realizing your knight strength uh, pawns uh, pawn central controls and similar similar ideas so here rook to c1 now peter leko plays this move bishop takes c3 rook takes c3 uh, here Magnus doesn't want to take of course with the pawn because then you risk backward pawn which is also a mm -hmm. strategical disadvantage you see uh, then I think black would probably try something like knight to a5 and knight to c4 in order to cement the knight and never allow white to improve this uh, backward pawn position so that's why rook to c3 very necessary move and now comes this outpost on e4 in the game, uh, rook to c2 was played, and here um, uh, Peter Leko played rook to e8. The better idea, I believe, is simply to 
simplify the position knight takes g3 f takes g3 and now knight takes e5 rook takes e5 rook takes c2 queen to c2 and now even to play rook to e8 and i think black doesn't have any troubles uh after potential maybe uh rook takes e8 queen takes e8 maybe now a potential uh queen to c5 is working but now maybe queen to d7 we can protect everything and uh, maybe uh, we can also uh, create some checks here on, on e1 and maybe try queen to d uh, followed also attacking here on this uh on the second rank so it's now really hard for both players to win the game because uh queen and pawns end games are really a tough one so here after the move uh rook to c2 uh, peter leko tried to complicate the position with the move rook to e8 and here magnus takes simply rook takes c6 and now after rook takes uh knight takes c6 and after rook takes c6 we have rook takes c6 and b takes c6 okay what uh we have now is new position black has of course the, uh, this disadvantage of the backward pawn but the bishop's activity is not such a powerful one as it aims into nothing so it's not such a strong bishop uh, the bishop uh, can be improved of course on a very active square on e5 and here comes uh, now the critical moment of the game here uh, magnus carlson plays the move bishop to h2 and peter leko played the move rook to e6 and in the commentary uh, post uh, post match comments uh, he said that this was a mouse slip that he didn't want to play this move because this is really now a bad bad blunder because um, what he wanted to play is to move queen to d7 and we come now to the problems of playing online chess this mouse slip it happens to me many many times in winning games and sometimes my opponent plays a mouse slip when i have a completely losing game so there is this problem okay uh this old school chess players are not so familiar maybe with with blitz and bullet games like magnus carlson because he streams many bullet games and i've seen now also vasily Ivanchuk. he has played now a stream in which he had also problems to handle the mouse somehow so as i said here after the move bishop to h2 rook to e6 a huge blunder because of this move f3 and the knight has to retreat but now after rook to e6 after f takes e6 okay uh it's still not losing immediately but this structure of this pawns you see this single pawn on d4 holds three pawns of blacks we have two backward pawns and it's simply too much to handle i believe if you just even take here the knight on d6 and continue to push against these two backward pawns it's a comfortable game but magnus simply plays queen to a4 uh, double attacks this uh, pawns queen to d7 and now queen to b4 attacks the knight uh, knight to c8 again maybe sort of an inaccuracy by peter Lico because now knight to f5 at least uh brings you something maybe you can have some kind of an account counter activity here but again it's a bad position with these two backward pawns you cannot push any of them that's the problem if you could just maybe advance one of them or one of them it could be maybe a draw position if peter Lico wouldn't wouldn't have played here the move rook to e6 i believe this game would then in a draw and uh, peter Lico would force in an armageddon game but here after knight to c8 we have a uh, queen to b8 by magnus and now king to f7 we have now uh, bishop to e5 uh, king to g8 b4 very important move and now after king to f7 a4 we have king to a7 a5 we have uh, king to d8 and now a6 let's stop a little bit here why is this move order by magnus carlson so important because we know magnus carlson is an end game master so what magnus carlson has accomplished here is that basically his three pawns are blocking out four pawns and it's a huge huge strategical advantage uh when we watch this end game because he has now a three versus two situation on the king side so that's the most important thing so on the king side magnus carlson can create a pass pawn black cannot create pass pawns at, on the queen side because as i said these three pawns are holding four pawns of black so this is very important to realize now the next couple of moves of magnus carlson after queen to king to e8 we have now king to h2 and magnus carlson tries simply to trade off the queens taking of course is not an option because we'll simply take a takes b7 and we'll promote to queen so that's why king to e7 and here magnus plays g4 uh, we have a knight to e7 and now queen to b8 we have knight to uh, c8 and now the king can march on we have now the opportunity as i said to maybe create here in this three versus two situation finally a pass pawn situation so 
uh, in the game uh, we have king to d8 we have queen to b7 and now knight to d6 uh, played by peter leko and now magnus realizes this idea to go now into favorable endgame queen to d7 king takes and now bishop takes d6 as i said although we have the same pawns pawn count on the board but this is a winning endgame here for white uh, here f4 forcing now this two versus one situation on the king side Peter Leko has to move the king because he has to protect this pass pawn situation. And now h4 played by Magnus. We have uh, king to f6. Uh, h takes g5. H takes g5. And now f takes g5. King takes g5. And you realize now this pass pawn situation is simply too much to handle. Uh, here Magnus plays a simply king to f3. King to g6. And now this pawn is marching on. But now Magnus has the opportunity to remaneuver his king on the queen side and can now grab many many pawns so in the game king to g5 king takes e6 uh, here magnus takes another pawn and here after b5 this position peter lake resigned because now we can play simply b6 and a7 a8 and it's game over so uh great game by both sides uh Great match game by Peter Leko because he made really Magnus Carlsen sweat, made this mouse slip. He said it was a mouse slip, I believe him, because I don't think that he would lie about that. Uh, as I said, mouse slips are part of this online chess world. And uh, uh, he said that he wanted to play the move queen to d7. This could be really a drawish position. Magnus Carlsen also said that maybe he is slightly better, but uh, he thinks... Uh, in this practical games that this game would end in probably in a draw and the magnus was correct because he was slightly better the evaluation was plus uh, uh, 0 0.40 plus uh, uh, for white so it's not nothing special i think that peter Lico would have make a draw and uh, maybe going to the summer getting game after many rounds now we have uh, now the leader magnus carlson is uh, the leader we have also uh, janne pomiaci playing also really really great chess so also boris gerfland is there uh, in the top uh, and um, ding liren surprised me he's now on the last play vishy anand also um, second last behind so he's not playing well he had some winning chances, missed some winning chances against Vladimir Kramnik today. We'll see what will happen in the continuation of this tournament. So as I said, probably Magnus Carlsen is in the semi-finals. So the first four players will uh, then play the semi-finals. Uh, Peter Leko unfortunately lost the game, but still has good opportunities to, to make it to the top four. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. Here's my link to my series, this Bishop, Knight and uh, Pawn strategy. You can check it out in order to better understand when to trade off pawns, when to trade off bishops, when to trade off knights for a bishop, when to go into bishops end games, when to go into knights end games. So it's a fresh uh, playlist. So we'll continue to make that uh, tomorrow. Also, I've already have created one video, so I'll publish it tomorrow. You can also check out this list. So if you want to know more about this tournament, check out my um, Legends of Tournament uh, so far. Here's the link. And uh, if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course.